Hi everyone, welcome to Feline Jungle. My name is Viona and this channel is everything plant related. If you're passionate about plants or cats, then hit that subscribe button so you get my videos weekly. Do you hate using soil? Do you hate the mess that comes with soil and all the pests that are living inside your soil? Then you should consider hydroponics or semi-hydroponics. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why people are using hydroponics, why you should change some of your plants into hydroponics, and what plants actually do well in hydroponics. Let's start by breaking down the word hydroponics. So hydro means water and ponics is means part of a system or technology. When you put it together, it's a water system that helps feed plants nutrients. So the most basic way is just having the plants suspended in a solution of nutrients. And a classic example is actually the lucky bamboo that you see in a lot of stores. You'll see it in like a solution that's usually green or some kind of liquid color. That's the nutrients that feeds the lucky bamboo. You can use hydroponics in a very advanced level such as urban farming, but in this part of the video, I'm going to touch upon how you can use it at a houseplant level. The reason why I like to use hydroponics when I propagate plants is that you can see the roots forming and you can catch any issues that are coming along the way. You can see exactly what's going on under the plant. Something you should be aware of with using full hydroponics is that your plant will develop water roots. Yes, so these plants will develop different types of roots according to the condition that it's in. And when it's fully in water, the roots are usually smaller and more fragile compared to the soil roots because they don't have to go through different mediums to find moisture. The water is right there and they just have to absorb it. So they're usually more fragile. And the issue with that is when you transition it from hydroponics back into soil, sometimes it'll be unsuccessful and they'll actually rot because it just can't handle the transition that well. In addition to hydroponics, there's something called semi-hydroponics. It uses inorganic medium to anchor the plant in place. Inorganic material would absorb all the nutrients up into the medium. Examples of semi-hydro material is LECA, which are clay aggregate stones that I have here. These are exploded clay stones are very lightweight and strong, and you can reuse it multiple times. Another medium is lava stone, which is a similar thing, and it's very porous, so I'll have a lot of aeration for the plants, which is perfect for rooting your plants. People also use perlite. I like to use semi-hydro for propagating my Hoyas. This is a perfect example. I just like stuff a lot of things in this one pot. Here is my Hoya Bertonii. This is my Hoya Eskimo. And this is actually not a Hoya. This is a Deschidia watermelon. It has a two-part system where this catches the water and this holds all the LECA in place. Originally, I got this Hoya Bertonii as a bare-rooted cutting. And when I put it in soil, as this wasn't doing well, it stayed dehydrated, like the leaves would not plump up. So I got five cuttings and I lost three of them to soil and I knew I needed to like switch to something else immediately. So that's actually gave me the push to try LECA. And after it kind of got used to being in LECA, it just started growing like crazy. This, you can't tell, but it's actually just two cuttings and it just started branching out. Since I have space, why not just put extra cuttings that I have in here? And that's when I started rooting my Hoya Eskimo in here and also this the shitty eye. This is the Philodendron Ataba Bowenzi, but I air layered it first and then I put it in LECA. It gave me this leaf, as you can see here. But another thing to know about semi-hydro is like the nutrients. You can see like the color isn't as lush or green as the other ones. It's also kind of small. And I think it's because I haven't um, tweaked the right level of nutrients that's needed for this plant in LECA. So that's something that I'm trying to understand. Because of the LECA and the humidity and the water that's being absorbed up, it creates a humidity dome for the plant too. So these aerial roots are growing like crazy. They're really loving the humidity that's coming off of the plant. So that's another good thing about LECA. And because of the humidity aspect, I actually converted this Philodendron Pestizanum Silver into LECA as well, because this plant really loves humidity. It only thrived in a plastic bag. And as soon as I took it out, 
it has problems unfurling its leaf here it kind of ripped itself in the process of opening up and having this leka system it creates humidity needed for the the plant so this is a new leaf that came straight out of the plant after it converted into leka and so far it hasn't had any issues unfurling yet so and also the aerial roots are doing really well they're just growing out in the middle of the air the great thing about semi hydro is that the medium that's used for it is reusable so this is the leka clay balls i've reused this for so many different plants i've used it for my stephania recta when it wasn't rooting i put it in leka and i think the same exact pot and it rooted so quickly and after it started rooting i transitioned to soil it was perfect transition another great example of reusing the leka is um, the hoya compacta that i got it was also bare rooted and it did nothing in soil like it would not plump up it was just like a prune it, like a raisin and when i put it in leka it was just the perfect amount of aeration needed for the roots and also the moisture that's needed from absorbing up into the plant that it just plumped up in like two weeks the key to happy plants in semi-hydro and hydro is actually the nutrients Remember that your plants are in inorganic medium, so it doesn't have any nutrients in your clay balls or in leka. And also it's in water, which doesn't really have nutrients. So it's very dependent on what you put into that solution. For me, I use Dynagro Pro and actually in the description tells you the amount you should put for hydroponics, which is very helpful. My Hoyas do really well in whatever I give it. But my philodendron atabo boenzi as you can see with the newest leaf needs a little bit more nutrient so i would say do your research on what your plant needs and also there's a lot of researches that are going on on what you should put into semi-hydro solutions i keep talking about the advantages of semi-hydroponic and hydroponic but there are some disadvantages and cons for it too for example you can see a lot of algae buildup on it it doesn't really affect the plants but because we don't have that advanced system here where they use it in like urban farming they have like a constant flow of water recycling the water you do have some buildup that you have to clean weekly this is just um, a week of me not cleaning it and you can see it's building up on the pot and also in the water Another disadvantage is that this can be very high maintenance. As I said, you have to clean it out weekly or bi-weekly to flush out all the minerals and all the buildup. Another thing is if you go on vacation and this water runs out, then your plant is basically sitting in nothing. It will dry up. So that's a disadvantage. Whereas in soil, it can slowly absorb all like the nutrients and moisture that's captured in the soil. The water level is very important, depends on what your plant adapted to. So if your plant is used to the water level being below the roots and you fill it up too much, it actually is prone to root rot. So that's another thing you have to be careful for. You can't put too much water because these will be soil roots. So if you put too much water, it'll actually rot the roots. So you have to be very careful and you can see I put it on a very low level just for it to absorb up and that's about it. Why everyone should know about hydroponics and how is it benefiting us in a more massive scale. So hydroponics is actually revolutionary in like urban farming or just farming because traditional farming, you need a big amount of land to plant all your crops and that land is sustainable to like a lot of different conditions that you can't control like the amount of sunlight or the amount of nutrient that's going in the plant or any like natural disaster that might control and destroy the the crops but in hydroponics that completely changes everything it's more controlled environment you can control the nutrients you can analyze everything and most importantly you don't have to grow it in like a massive land of soil you can do it in even in urban settings like your basement or your balconies you can grow plants vertically as long as you have this hydroponic system that can minimize the amount of space you need for planting a good example that we have here in Manhattan is actually this place called Farm One and that's an urban farming that uses hydroponics to grow different herbs and vegetables in the city and they actually don't use any sunlight or any massive land. I believe they have like an office where they just have stacks of 
herbs growing in this hydroponic system that uses grow light and everything's in a controlled setting. That's very revolutionary compared to the traditional farming that we have and it could very benefit us in the future. In addition to using semi-hydroponics and hydroponics in farming industry, we're beginning to see a lot of incorporation into design and architecture. So I first heard of semi-hydroponics and hydroponics actually in school when I took a green wall design class. In the green wall design class, we had to design a green wall to connect it into the mechanical system of a building to improve not only the energy consumption, but also bring fresh air into the building. Because in a kind of interior building environment, there's a lot of toxins, from just the air being captured inside the building. And by having the plants incorporate into already the mechanical system, you can bring fresh air to the people. In that class, my professor was really adamant in using semi-hydro because she didn't like how dirty soil was. So she really made us use grow stone and lava. Grow stone is like a kind of glass aggregate that's very lightweight and easy to manipulate. And same thing with lava stone. We actually were able to get it into different forms that made it very easy to maintain compared to soil. So the next time when you see a green wall, you should definitely check out what system they use. It's most likely some kind of semi-hydroponic system. They have a green wall in Lincoln Center that you can check out. They also have a green wall in a plant shop that you can check out in Brooklyn. It's called Greenery Unlimited. I actually showed it in one of my videos where I did a plant shop tour that you can check out as well. So there's a lot of examples of how people incorporate semi-hydroponics and hydroponics into their daily lives. And if you see one, please comment below so I can check it out. I'm very interested in seeing what kind of systems they use and how they do it. This video is just an introduction level on hydroponics and semi-hydroponics. I kind of briefly touch upon how you can use it in houseplant levels, how people use it in farming, and how people use it in architecture. If you're interested in it, you should definitely do a lot more research on it. I'm just trying to show how you can experiment a lot with plants and how plants can be incorporated into our living environment. I hope this video introduces different ways you can grow plants at home and when you see a green wall or greenery in public spaces, you look more closely at the systems that they use to grow the plant and how they will benefit us. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget 10 second challenge to like, comment, subscribe and share this video with all your friends. Thank you. Bye.